Hello guys. I made this video specifically for LOD 0% buff with solo tank and 3 healers. I'd like to share with you some of my experiences as well as the conception and philosophy we follow in Afterlight about such challenges or in general high level of team play and gameplay optimization in order to achieve this. I want also to point out that in particular there shouldn't be a big of a difference by using 3 or 4 healers if every one of them is doing his job properly unless of course the bad RNG does happen with Valkyries permanently grabbing a healer. This is why this video is going to be more focused on cooldown and healing management while using solo tank and not about typical strategy and tactics for boss fight. So let's get started, shall we? When you set up your raid composition, cooldown management and etc. the first thing to do for such a challenge is to estimate duration of the fight or in general the duration of each phase so that you can make a proper raid composition which would provide enough external defensive cooldowns for the raid and tank. In order to achieve this we sat down and watched some of our old regular 0% kills with 2 tanks and 4 healers to analyze the performance of the players and we drew conclusion that we shouldn't have had more than 5 infests in first phase with bloodlust on the start and more than 4 or 5 soul reapers in second phase possible pushing of lich king into second transition phase before fifth soul reaper with really strong dps and in case we end second phase with 25 alive members and of course all of this with 2 extra damage dealers. For tank we ended up picking a protection paladin. There are reasons for this but one of the main is cause of the talent Ardent Defender. Ardent Defender prevents tank's death when he receives fatal damage and instead heals him. It has 2 minutes cooldown and it's a perfect defensive CD in case of healer's mistake or inability of the healers to heal at that very moment or incoming damage is too high. The other reason is also additional divine guardian cooldown for the raid and tank himself. The talents which our tank used were specifically made for this kill, provided him with more threat and healing received by passing improved devotion aura to holy paladin as well as sacrificing some of the retribution talents like vindication for divinity and seals of the pure. By passing it to a healer, the holy paladin can use devotion aura in combination with aura mastery and divine sacrifice slash guardian for pretty solid cooldowns during some of the soul reapers and not only. Divinity on the other hand increases all healing done on the tank by additional 5%. An alternative option for the tank should be to transfer 5 points from Seals of the Pure into Heart of the Crusader and Vindication. The tank should also use Glyph of Salvation as an additional cooldown. While Hand of Salvation reduces threat each second, the idea behind the use of the Glyph is to reduce a specific source of damage like Second Tick of Soul Reaper and maybe covering 1 or 2 melee hits by Lich King before tank to cancel the effect with simple macro. To fix the problem caused by absence of vindication talent we had one of the warriors specking in to improve demoralizing shout. For healers we got holy paladin, restoration shaman and disciplined priest. Basically the top 3 healers for this job and in general the best trio. Holy paladin, needless to say, the best tank healer in the game providing the raid and himself with solid defensive and healing cooldowns. Beacon of Light and a pretty fast Holy Light cast in combination with Glyph of Holy Light provide the tank and raid with strong and consistent healing. Sacred Shield is the other ability which secures the tank with consistent absorption. Sacred Shield scales with spell power this is why it's Holy Paladin job to keep it on the tank and not the Protection Paladin himself. Restoration Shaman. Beside the buffs he provides the raid via totems and bloodlust, Resto Shaman has unique healing mechanisms which is tied into his normal talents and abilities. In terms of tank healing Ancestral Fortitude is a buff that procs on target when you make critical heal and it reduces physical damage taken by 10%. While Disciplined Priest has the similar talent, Inspiration, Restoration Shaman is the best healer for the job to present and keep Ancestral Fortitude up on the tank and the reason for this is first, the higher critical chance which he gets from the gear and talents as well as the 1 second cast time of Lesser Healing Wave and the way Tidal Wave's buff interacts with single target healing spells. Plus 25% more crit for lesser healing wave and 30% lower cast time for healing wave and second. In general fast and flexible when switching between tank and raid healing and vice versa. Earth Shield is also the other wonderful ability which secures the tank with additional healing since Earth Shield will always procs instantaneously after damage is taken. According to my experience and logs, Earth Shield procs approximately an average once each 4 seconds and this ability should be specced and glyphed. Lesser healing wave should also be glyphed. 
Ancestral Awakening is another smart heal talent ability which will always procs on the lowest percentage health member when you critically heal with lesser healing wave, healing wave or riptide. Discipline Priest is the best class for handling the infest through power world shield as well as providing the tank with pain suppression cooldown which reduces the damage taken by 40%. Basically the most powerful external cooldown which can be given to a tank. Power Infusion is another ability which increases spell casting speed and reduces the mana cost of spells by 20%. Normally this is a cooldown given to a DPS caster like a mage, but at some point it should be given to Holy Paladin to save him some mana and reduce Holy Light cast to global cooldown cap. Basically for some of the Soul Reapers. We used also 4 Retribution Paladins with one of them specced into Divine Sacrifice slash Guardian and the rest into Improved Lay on Hands and Aura Mastery. The drop of 2 points from Seals of the Pure for the Retribution should be roughly equivalent of 3% damage loss for the Paladin and the price is worth for such a challenge. Also 2 of Retributions used Glyph of Divine Storm instead of Glyph of Consecration. This is of course optional just we decided to secure the fight even further. Anyway, normally Divine Storm can heal for 25% from the damage split among up to 3 raid members. The Glyph increases it to 40%. While the heal by Divine Storm is not smart it still has a chance to prox on the tank at some point. Also in my opinion the best option should be to combine all three healers with the Retribution and Protection Paladins in one group. This will lead to lack of Vampiric Embrace by Shadow Priest as additional tank healing but also give to the tank access to two Divine Sacrifices and in additional, the whole group will benefit by Mana Tide Totem. In additional we got 3 druids and 2 shadow priests spread among the groups for extra divine hymns and tranquilities if needed, as well as passive healing by vampiric embrace, hymn of hope, enervates, and combat res. Judgment of light should be used from retribution or protection paladin and not by holy paladin. It's a tactical wise and in general better because of holy's inability to present and keep it all the time during the fight especially during second phase when the damage over tank is going to be insane at some point. The global cooldown of judgment is not affected by haste and it's 1.5 seconds. Also taking into consideration the average cast time of 1.2 seconds for holy light and after the applicable delay of a true batching system which exists on war main, this will be 3 seconds that a holy paladin is unable to cast a heal on a tank. Additionally this is at least once each 20 seconds in order for paladin to keep it 100% of the time since this is the duration of judgment debuff on the target. The risk for a holy paladin to lose the tank is too big. We plan to announce to the two Retribution Paladins to use Joel, the main reason for this lies in understanding of how the ability works. In order to have a chance to receive a heal you should attack the target affected by Judgment of Light as a main target. AoE abilities like Cleave or Divine Storm or whatever cannot trigger a heal if your main target of attacks is not affected by Joel. By using two Retributions to use Joel we increase the chance Judgment of Lights to be presented on two different targets during Valkyrie's phase thus a bigger chance and a bigger part of the raid to receive a heal at this moment. The definition of true batching system is the time delay between the actual completion of the cast of spell this includes also instant cast spells and the moment when your target receives the heal or damage. Keep also in mind that some spells and abilities have a travel animation like Fireball or Lightning Bolt and the delay from batching system applies when the spell hits the target. According to War Main logs it's usually 100 to 250 milliseconds or 0.1 to 0.25 seconds but sometimes even more. The delay of batching system is not directly affected by your personal ping and there is nothing you can do to completely avoid it but if you do have a higher ping it can become even worse. On the sample graph you can see what exactly I mean. I took holy light casts of 1.2 seconds as an example. Thanks to spell Q system you can Q your next spell while you are still in a process of casting thus your next spell cast will start instantaneously after the end of the previous. The thick red lines indicate the intervals where your target will receive a heal after the end of holy light cast. If you are precise enough with the use of spell Q system it's very possible to end up starting a new holy light cast before the target to receive a heal from previous cast. The understanding of how batching system works is from great importance for healers and the way how they should precast heals for infests or soul reapers during the fight. Melee swing timer and spells. Spells which require cast time used to reset the melee swing timer which practically means that after the completion of the cast the target is unable to attack for a time equal to current attack speed of his weapon. This is true mechanic which goes not only to players but non-players creatures as well. 
Channeling casts such as Mind Flay or Mind Seer for example doesn't follow this rule and the target will melee hit as soon as he finish with the cast. In Lich King case this is summon Drudge Ghouls and summon Vile Spirits. According to logs Lich King hits average each 1.8 seconds with Frost Fever or Infected Wounds debuffs on him and about 0.9 seconds during the haste part of Soul Reaper. During the fight Lich King uses different abilities which requires cast time. This includes Infest, Summon Shadow Trap and Summon Shambling Horror in first phase, Infest and Defile during second phase and Defile during third phase. All of this abilities reset his melee swing timer once Lich King completes to cast them and it is really important since this mechanics overlap with additional abilities at some point of the encounter and significantly drop the difficulty of the fight and in particular during some of the Soul Reaper phases if tank and healers know how to use properly this advantage. In general the analysis of the fight and timers of Lich King's abilities is what makes a proper organization for balancing of defensive and healing cooldowns. One thing which in my opinion every guild should do is announcing of cooldown management before the fight thus you will let every support player who takes part into this to be prepared and knows what raid expects from him to do at this moment. In case of the inability of supporter to finish his job at this very moment because he is grabbed by Valkyrie for example, the next on the list replaces him and they just swap each other. There should be one or two raid leaders who specifically watch and monitor about these things and call 10 seconds before next infest or soul reaper as a reminder who is next and what cooldown he should use. It is tank and supporter responsibility to track and monitor boss timers and cast bar and use their cooldowns in proper time, perfectly one second before soul reaper or infest to hit the raid. Divine guardian is specific cooldown which lasts 6 seconds and requires a bit more precisely usage. Because of this divine sacrifice should be used less than one second before soul reaper to hit the tank thus divine guardian will cover also the second tick before to expire since the big shadow damage hits five seconds later. Holy paladin and resto shaman should also track and monitor power word shield on their raid frames which will help them to react and optimize healing during infest and eventually call or use cooldown in case disciplined priest or some other healer is grabbed. This is where divine hymns and tranquilities also come into play. Before the start of the fight the raid should be already pre-shielded by disciplined priest starting at about 18 seconds before engage. He shouldn't shield the tank and the reason for this is rapture cooldown. Priest wants to trigger rapture during infests in order to gain maximum effect and mana return. Since rupture has 12 seconds cooldown there is 7-8 seconds window after each infest where priest is able to use power word shield on the tank. Right after he finish with shielding the raid discipline should use prayer of mending on the tank followed by penance as a precast for the start in order to place divine aegis and inspiration up on the tank. Holy paladin should use beacon of light about 10 seconds before the engage which will give him enough time to drink and recover his mana to full for the start of the fight. Sacred shield should be used about 3 seconds before the engage with flash of light for additional hot on the tank followed by well precasted holy light for the start. It's a mistake for Holy Paladin to start encounter with Judgment ability for additional haste. Sometimes Lich King hits the tank 2-3 times in a row right on the start and this can lead to very early procs of Ardent Defender or even wipe in some scenario. The best option is to cast 3 Holy Lights and then Judgment thus this will synchronize it with the start of Infest's cast. The cast time of Infest is 2 seconds thus Holy Paladin will also have some time left for precasting Infest after the global cooldown of Judgment pass. Resto Shaman should keep Earth Shield and Riptide up on the tank and also stacks his relic before the engage followed by well precasted healing wave for the start. Resto Shaman should also procs Ancestral Fortitude before the engage thus reducing the damage from initial attacks by Lich King. The first seconds of the encounter Lich King alternates to cast his abilities starting with Infest in about 5 seconds, then summon Drudge Ghouls in about 3 seconds later then first Shadow Trap and in the end first Shambling Horror. This series of cast sequences doesn't allow him to hit the tank really often cause this abilities reset his melee swing timer. Summon Drudge Ghouls does not reset swing timer but it's pretty long cast. During phase 1 tank will receive considerably more damage from physical attacks by boss and shamblings. This is thanks to plague siphon buff up on lich king which he gains one additional stack each time necrotic plague jumps. Each plague siphon stack increases his physical damage by additional 2%. Disciplined priest should focus shielding only range group leaving melees to resto shaman and holy pala because of ghouls which will be constantly aggroed by melees and mainly by warriors and retribution paladins. Priest should shield warriors only while rapture is on cooldown. The logic is same as shielding tank. 
A good idea is also retribution paladins to use sacred shields on warriors in late stage of phase 1 when there are more ghouls on them. The resto shaman should alternate riptides between tank and melees getting damage by ghouls and precasting chain heal for infest on the melee who is receiving more damage from ghouls at this moment. Chain heal can be precasted also on target affected by riptide for 25% more healing if needed and once infest is removed then switching again to healing tank via lesser healing wave or healing wave in some scenarios. Holy paladin should optimize healing by glyph of holy light for infest with well precasted holy light on melees. Disciplined priest should use prayer of mending on tank right before infest to hit the raid thus it will allow the spell to jump to nearby melees for additional heal. You see the key for managing this by healers is proper precasting and stacking of different source of heals at same time on the raid in order to burst and remove infest as fast as possible. If Valiner happens to prox between infests, good tip for holy paladin is to spread holy lights and shields across the raid thus optimizing absorption for next infest. Otherwise spamming holy light on himself for increasing the heal by glyph of holy light by additional 5% cause of divinity talent in case there is nothing else to heal at this moment. This is one of the reasons why holy paladin should start the fight with melee group as well as doing some auto attacks on the boss for mana region when it's possible. Earth shield does not scale dynamically with spell power which means that the ability will heal and scale with the amount of spell power you had during the time you applied it to the target. Good tip for min maxing with resto shaman is to track your amount of spell power at any moment thus you can refresh earth shield in moments when demonic pact gains you the most spell power mostly due to warlocks trinket procs and etc. Infest should be also covered by aura masteries on shadow rotating between retribution paladins as well as divine guardians. The idea behind optimization of divine sacrifice and divine guardian is to be used for covering not only infest but helping damage mitigation from lich king and shamblings in late stage of phase 1 when lich king has already more stacks by plague siphon or there are more ghouls on melees or shambling is about to die or if shambling succeeds to hit the tank for some reason before to get dispelled by a hunter while he is in enrage. The perfect scenario for the raid and tank should be if you succeed to avoid overlapping of two shamblings at same time on the tank or basically if first shambling horror dies while the second one spawns. This will noticeable reduce the overall damage taken on the tank and significantly decrease the chance of wipe. This of course requires good organization and unit control with proper passing of each necrotic plague to the shambling. Right before the third infest is the time when paladins should start rotation their hand of sacrifices on the tank. The time when Lich King starts to collect more and more stacks by Plague Siphon. Healers should pay attention on who is using Sacrifice at this moment and overheal him. Hand of Sacrifice is specific cooldown which transfers percentage amount of damage taken to the caster and sometimes it requires from caster to use Divine Protection as a defensive to prevent him from eventual death if he also gets damage from another source like Infest or Ghouls for example. Same goes for Divine Sacrifice with the difference that Divine Sacrifice transfers percentage of party damage taken to the caster and the effect will break if caster drops under 20% health. Hand of Sacrifice lasts for 12 seconds or until the maximum amount of damage cap is transferred. The damage cap is equal to maximum health of the caster. Because of this reason on 0% buff Hand of Sacrifice is more weak than 30% buff in terms of duration and often the cooldown will not last for more than 2-3 hits by Lich King and almost immediately expire after first or second tick by Soul Reaper. By the fourth infest the first shambling should go into frenzy and die few seconds later if everything goes well with Necrotic Plague. Tank should use his Divine Protection at this moment as a strong cooldown since frenzy increases attack speed and damage of shambling horror. This is also the moment when the Holy Paladin should use his Divine Illumination as a mana cooldown as well as increasing healing done by 35% thus Divine Illumination will go off cooldown near the third Soul Reaper in Phase 2 since it has 3 minutes cooldown. Avenging Wrath should be used by Holy Paladin in the end of Phase 1 when the damage taken is insane or keep it for transition phase as a healing cooldown in case of too many stacks by pain and suffering on the raid and particularly on melees because of their inability to spread as well as range DPS. Depends on the situation and Holy's estimate. If this happens wings can also be combined with GTS if Holy Paladin decides to wear the trinket for this challenge thus increasing the healing by 20%. This applies also to rest of the healers and the moment they should use GTS. The trinket should be used really as a cooldown and should not be wasted for light damage taken especially during transition phase. While GTS does not scale with spell power the effect is increased by multipliers which directly increase healing done and healing receiving. 
In the case that Ice Sphere targets a melee, he should immediately move out of the group to avoid the AoE damage on the melees which pulses each second. The combination of 4-5 stacks by Pain and suffering an AoE damage by Ice Sphere on the melees is deadly for the raid and mostly leads to instant wipe so the melee DPS need to be aware of this at all times. One Divine Guardian can be used when Lich King completes Remorseless Winter cast and spawns the platform. This will help with damage mitigation and gives a time to raid to spread in preparation for transition phase as well as reducing the tank damage taken. Discipline Priest should use Pain Suppression for Frenzy of the Second Shambling Horror for total damage mitigation during the start of transition phase when this happens eventually while tank keeps second shambling, first raging spirit and few ghouls left from first phase. The best scenario should be if second shambling dies before the spawn of first raging spirit but it depends on overall duration of first phase or in general how long the raid will need to push Lich King into transition phase after the spawn of second shambling as well as the total amount of stacks by necrotic plague at this moment. During transition phase disciplined priest should keep spamming power world shield on the raid and bouncing prayer of mending mainly across the melees. In periods of high damage taking he should start to cast prayer of healing on critical groups as well as flash heals and right before the end of transition he should switch again to shielding members in preparation for first infest which hits the raid few second after the start of second phase. Restoration shaman should keep alternating riptides across the tank and melees and spamming chain heal and eventually consumes riptides for stronger chain heals if damage is huge. At this point cooldowns like nature swiftness and tidal force can be used as well if they are off cooldown. Depends on situation he may need to switch even to healing waves or lesser healing waves while tidal waves is up on him for additional smart procs by ancestral awakening. Holy paladin should keep spamming holy lights and trying to auto attack raging spirits for mana when it's possible. Right after lich king completes with quake and breaks the platform off second phase starts and he casts first infest. Aura mastery on shadow should be used at this moment. Depends on how your raid runs and manages with cooldowns it's good idea one divine sacrifice or even hand of sacrifice to be used on the tank for damage mitigation by lich king and raging spirit left if there are any off cooldown otherwise healers should really hard focused on overhealing the tank at this moment. The raging spirit is first priority to die because few second later lich king calls first valkyries. Currently on war main valkyries share the same aggro table with lich king which means that once they drop to 50% health and fly in the air all of them will attack the tank via life siphon. According to war main logs life siphon does from 2500 to 3000 shadow damage in normal circumstances and the cast time is 2 seconds. With the duration of second phase and each wave of valkyries past the damage taken on the tank will increase significantly thus supporters should be aware of this. Right after second infest, Lich King casts first Soul Reaper on the tank. This also happens during first Valkyries wave while the tank should move the boss together with Valkyries for additional cleave damage on Lich King and in additional first Soul Reaper is very similar with the fourth one coming right after infest during the third wave of Valkyries. Because of this reason the first tick can not overlap with auto attack since infest resets melee swing timer of Lich King but the second tick on the other side will hit the tank nearly the time when Lich King is about to melee swing. Anyway if the tank moves out of boss's melee range while Lich King is casting Infest he will delay first Soul Reaper by nearly one second after the completion of Infest's cast. Since the cooldown timer of each new Soul Reaper starts instantaneously after Lich King applies the previous on the tank, this will delay every next Soul Reaper in comparison with the normal circumstance. The delay of first Soul Reaper will change the interaction of melee attacks with Soul Reaper in late stage of second phase while for example the fourth Soul Reaper should happen during third wave of Valkyries and right after sixth infest and this can possible lead to overkill damage by first tick with melee attack and life siphon by six Valkyries in the air. This is why pain suppression should be keeped and used for this Soul Reaper. In general, melee swing timer of the boss interaction with soul reapers is a really interesting topic for discussion in terms of optimization of cooldowns and proper precasting of heals but also keep in mind that sometimes warmain likes to play with the timers so it's your job to keep yourself up to date for eventual change of the script. The idea of this video is to give you right information and knowledge about how the things work thus you can make your own strategy for eventual changes in future. Two external cooldowns should be given to the tank per soul reaper. One before first tick and one before second tick of Soul Reaper. 
divine sacrifice and hand of sacrifice or two hand of sacrifices for late soul reapers. The exception is the second soul reaper when the tank should use his divine protection. Again in terms to optimize divine guardian effect, it's good to use it to cover not only soul reaper damage but also infest and damage mitigation by valkyries. This is why divine sacrifice should be used right before first soul reaper thus covering infest as well as hand of sacrifice right before second tick of first soul reaper. The similar is the situation with fourth soul reaper in combination with pain suppression as I did already mention and hand of sacrifice before second tick. Disciplined priest should be able also to precast power word shield on tank for the second tick of first and fourth soul reapers since rupture will be on cooldown. Aura masteries on shadow should be used for late infests reducing also the damage by life siphon as well as one aura mastery for fourth soul reaper covering that infest as well. Keep also in mind that while the damage by first tick of soul reaper can be reduced via shadow resistance effects, the second tick is not resistible. Second Soul Reapers is really dangerous for the tank and he should use Divine Protection as a strongest cooldown since it happens about 9-10 seconds after third infest thus it's really hard to be exactly calculated with melee attacks and it's possible first and or second tick to overlap with auto hit by Lich King. In additional second wave of Valkyrie spawns right after this Soul Reaper followed by Defile and fourth infest while Lich King is under the influence of haste buff. This requires from healers to move and spread which makes them unable to heal. The situation is very similar with the third soul reaper and first tick that's why it's good double hand of sacrifices to be used. One before the first and one before the second tick. In additional sometimes lich king casts fifth infest right before or right after second tick of third soul reaper but this has something to do if there is delay of first soul reaper as I already explained. By the third soul reaper is the time when divine illumination and avenging wrath of holy paladin should come off cooldown. It's holy's estimate when and how to use them for maximum effect depending on current situation. Also power infusion of discipline priest should be again off cooldown at this moment so a good communication between both healers is required. Some tip according to my experience is refreshing of earth shield right before valkyries if there are less than 5 stacks left on the tank and if it's possible wasting a global cooldown for it at this moment. The reason. In case Resto Shaman gets grabbed thus this will ignore the chance Earth Shield to expire from the tank and leaving him without protection before raid to drop Shaman's Valkyrie to 50% health. This also applies to Holy Paladin and Sacred Shield if the duration is less than 20 seconds. If 5th Soul Reaper happens, again double hand of sacrifices should be used. There are additional cooldowns like improved lay on hands and glyph of salvation but this cooldown should be kept and used according to the situation and tank or healers estimate and call. In case if healer is grabbed or for additional damage mitigation by Lich King's melee attacks between soul reapers thus it will reduce part of the total damage taken which tank receives by Lich King and life siphon. In general the second phase is hardest to pass and requires good communication and proper usage of cooldowns at right moment as well as full focus on the timers and proper precasting by healers. Second transition phase does not differ much comparing with first one with the exception that four raging spirits spawn. Depends on DPS right after transition phase it's possible two ragings with Lich King to overlap at some point on the tank. At this moment one hand of sacrifice should be given to the tank. It's good idea Paladin Caster to use Divine Protection as a defensive because few second later Lich King casts Harvest Soul and if damage transfer is huge, Paladin may die during Harvest Soul which will lead to later enrage of Lich King after Frostmourn Chamber. During Frostmourn Chambers everything should be as a normal raid. Ranges should take care of wicked spirits inside and rage should circle around the room to avoid shadow bombs. In case of shitty bomb or spirit, or a mastery on shadow and even divine guardian should be used. There are two soul reapers per frostmourn chamber cycle. Right after Lich King applies on the tank the first soul reaper after each frostmourn, he starts to cast vile spirits. This is really long channeling cast which overlaps with the second shadow tick and 100% haste bonus which Lich King receives that he won't be able to attack the tank at all at this moment. Be aware that if for some reason Lich King has to be kited cause of enrage, this will change the timer interactions for this phase cycle and will delay both soul reapers. After the first frostmourn chamber there is still one raging spirit alive from second transition phase. Tank should take fast care of it and use his divine protection for damage mitigation by raging and soul reaper thus it will be again off cooldown for the fourth soul reaper, the second one after second chamber. Rage should kill this raging spirit as fast as possible. Hand of sacrifices and divine sacrifices should be used on the tank for soul reapers as well as between soul reapers while raid switch the sides because of vile spirits. Healers won't be able to heal optimal at this moment cause of movement. 
in additional retribution paladins and shadow priests should rotate to soak spirits via divine shield and dispersion. Disciplined priests should use pain suppression for the second soul reaper thus it will be again off cooldown for the fifth soul reaper right after third frostmourne chamber and possible the last one. Additional aura masteries on shadow and divine guardians can be used for vile spirits if needed because they happen to rush while lich king casts soul reapers as well thus it will help for total damage mitigation. Basically the cooldown management for the last phase follow the principle first come first serve since the huge part of third phase raid spends in frostmourne chamber. You can also visit and read Iqui's guide about retrospective analysis on discipline role in 0% buff Lich King 25 heroic encounter as well as my guide about restoration shaman. In addition you can join Funky Music's Discord if you have questions about your class or the game. There are lots of people and theory crafters who can help you with right answers in order to improve yourself. Links to all of this in the description below and see ya next time. Hey. Just one percent, one percent. Go, 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 yeah. go. Dot him, dot him, dot him, dot him. Dot him. <laughs> kite it, kite it. Somebody kite it. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Good job, guys. Yes. Fucking, fucking good job.